Hi guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about creating WPS activity. And you can say that entire IT industry is running on this particular activity because no matter what you do, you cannot bill uh, anything unless you create a WPS for this. WPS stand for work breakdown structure. Now you create these items in order uh, to decompose the entire project activities, entire project work and use them for billing and accounting purpose. Let's take the example of a software development project. Now in software development project, um, if we divide it uh, into few phases, the f we can say that initial phase will be design phase or rather requirement gathering phase. The so phase one requirement gathering, phase two um, solution development, phase three coding and development, phase four testing. Now let's take these four phases as four activities. Now you will create WBS for these four activities. They will have different codes and those codes are used for separate teams. So development team will use the coding and development WBS while charging in the timesheet. BAs will use um, design and requirement gathering codes. Testers will use uh, testing WPS code. So it's all about breaking down the entire work into smaller pieces which are manageable because the key here is to understand what all changes we are doing here, how that project will be delivered, what kind of changes will be required. And every activity every major minor significant activity need to have its own WPS. Let's say, I mean, I just used four phases, but let's say coding within coding, there are multiple kinds of activities. Let's say you are working on the web service coding and the UI coding. So there are different sections within coding. Now it's better to have different WPS codes for different activities because that will help you with better understandings. Um, let's say, a uh, year down the lane, you want to generate some kind of report to understand the distribution of overall efforts. Having better decomposition of work in the format of WBS will help you in better understanding. So try to um, decompose your work uh, in the best possible manner and avoid these high level. Now, of course, um, your high level WBS will be required and we will see how they are used. Uh, but the point is, try to have maximum decomposition. Now these are the type of WBS. So basically we have largely task oriented, deliverable oriented and time phased oriented WPS. So at the time of doing decomposition, the first example which I used where uh, I divided the project work into four pieces, uh, requirement gathering, solution development, coding and testing. These are task oriented. You can also use deliverable oriented. So you can develop or rather divide project work into the deliverables and then use that for creating your WBS. Time phased is usually used when the project is really big. So in those cases, you can, you know, phase one, phase two, you can use something like that uh, to create WBS. But the most important part of WBS is the and uh, their representation. So these are uh, four type of their representation, list view, hierarchical structure, tabular view and tree structure view. Uh, I have a document which I have created here. I will attach it in the resource section and it will be your assignment to create uh, something similar um, like this. So at this stage, I will show you, you will have access to this document, but while um, doing your assignment, try to, you know, uh, apply your knowledge, information, your exposure. So if you are working in some team, uh, if you are already have some kind of exposure to project management, it's better if you use your example. So this is a typical work breakdown structure document. Here you can see um, the first representation is a list view. It's very basic. We have just divided the project into phases and based upon each phase, uh, we have created uh, sub headings, which are basically representing the WBS here. So each point here, I will have their own WBS code. So if I'm using this code, then the project management team knows that I'm working on this particular activity. 
if I'm using some other WBS code, um, that will be clearly representing the actual task, actual work I'm doing. So it's really helpful. And list view is very basic. Another way of representing it is hierarchical structure. Here, basically, we create tables. Each, uh, you can see that it will have the level, it will have the WBS code, and it will have the element name. So WBS is the level one. Level two is the subdivision. And within each subdivision, there will be multiple activities. So if we go back, at the top, we have the project. This is the level one. Then at level two, we have initiation, project planning, and these headings. And then at level three, we have these activities. If there is um, any sub activity within this, that will be level four. So we use this kind of hierarchy here to create um, a hierarchical structure uh, representation for WBS. So here we will have these levels. Within that level, we will have these individual activities and their code. Another way of putting it is um, tab tabular view. So here you can see it's level one print generation system. It is basically nothing else. You can say it's a name of the project, then we have level two, then level three. And the other structure here is um, graphical wave. So let me just increase here. So you can see that here in this tree structure, it's a generic um, graphical um, structure, but it is again following a hierarchical structure, but the representation is graphical here. And one very critical element of any WBS document is WBS dictionary. You must include this with you know, all the details. So this dictionary will have all the elements, their level, their WBS code, their name, and the definition. So definition basically means description. So you have to include all of these details in your assignment. And please take some time. I mean, you can see that it's a big document, so I know it will take some time, but more time you put into it, a better clarity you will have. And you will understand the you know different processes, all the processes which goes into this. So, and you must create it on your own. Going back to a slide, so these are the four um, structure. I will suggest to you, recommend you to have all of these four. Uh, but um, again, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to select any particular method, you can also do that. So this is the input-output diagram. Uh, you can see. And in fact, you can understand that as we are talking about the work and its decomposition, we will have project management plan and the scope management plan and other project documents. We have project scope statement, requirement documentation is going to be there, uh, environmental factors, OPAs, expert judgment and decomposition. These are the standard tools and techniques we use for um, decomposition here. And the output will be scope baseline, project document update, assumption log, requirement documentation. And application is also similar, uh, project management plan. Uh, it will also help in baselining the scope. And then, of course, the project documentation like assumption log, requirement documentation, etc. So WBS is really uh, vital. Uh, please pay attention to the document I have attached. Go through the details and try to create one yourself. Thank you.